Thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Alan Jordan. I'm the general manager of Modesto Irrigation District. We have some staff members here. Paul Ward, who's the AGM of Water Resources. Joy Warren, who's our regulatory affairs person. We will all be presenting to you this evening on some issues that are affecting the district and more importantly, water issues that will be affecting you. Before we start though, I would like to take a couple of minutes just to introduce the board members that are here this evening. We have Paul Warder, who is the current chair of the MID board. He's here, uh, back in the back, uh, trying to get out is Glenn Wild. He's uh, he's here as well. Over to the side here is John Kidd, uh, 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 representing the division west of here. So we'd like to welcome you all. A couple of housekeeping issues, just for information. If you need to go to the restroom or so, it's out by the elevators where you came in. Take a left and another left. Uh, they're there. We have also cookies. We have uh, uh, we have some drinks. We plan to give you about an hour, hour and ten minute presentation of the issues that are affecting us as a district and you as owners of this district in terms of water. Who is after our water? At what stage they are. We do not plan and will, if we so choose, to get way down in the details of all of the activities that are affecting the district, but simply a high overview so you can get a sense of what we're facing and we're going to need your help. I believe each chair has a packet. Uh, the packet contains a lot of information, and what we would be asking you to do, if you feel so inclined at some point and you're not you're upset and concerned about where we're headed and what we're doing, we've got a list of the legislators, their addresses, emails, and phone numbers. Uh, until such time as there's a, a large coalition and organization within this community, we would, we would encourage you to voice your opinion uh, to those legislators. Uh, ultimately, they would then voice, or hopefully do some things from a legislative standpoint and also from a regulatory standpoint. So to start this evening, Walt is going to give us an overview of Don Pedro, where we are. I will then follow up with a presentation on the on the threats to the district, and then Joy will will complete the, the presentation with uh, our status in terms of where we are with FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and the relicensing of Don Pedro. And if you would write your questions down or hold questions, we'll have plenty of time. We'll be here as long as you'd like to be here to answer questions that you you have. Or you think about um, through the presentation. <laughs> Walter? Well, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to just go through a few slides and, and bring you up to date in terms of uh, what's happening with this water. It's been kind of unusual. And I think you'll see that in some of the slides. Certainly, this uh, this last storm has, has kind of changed conditions a little bit, um, different than what you're actually going to see in here. But um, let's just start. We're going to go through the status of the watershed, sort of what's happened up there this year, uh, what's happening with the uh, with the reservoir itself, and then some of the forecasts that the Department of Water Resources has come out with as it relates to our, our spring runoff. Just, uh, just to give you a picture, this is uh, showing all the major systems and reservoirs in California, and what's pretty remarkable about this is the blue bars show where the, the storage is right now, and the red line that's across there is, is, is where it typically is at this time of year. And every reservoir is reporting at greater than 100% of where it normally is this time of year. For example, Don Pedro is at 116% of where it normally is, or 81% of its total capacity. And you can see the same thing is true up here at Shasta, over at Oroville, over at San Luis, like I said, every, every reservoir. And, th and this is really uh, a reflection of a really strong start, which we got back in December. This is the accumulated uh, precipitation over the Tuolumne River watershed, and you can see how, how strong that December is. And that's really, well, even even the October, November, the fall, but the December really has, is what's driven um, the, the water storage condition to date. You can see what happened with January being dry, um, right here, and this does not reflect the storm that we just had. In fact, the, in terms of rainfall in this last storm, we already picked up our total in February, so this is going to change once I have some updated information. But uh, the point here is that we had a very strong start, and, and then it tended to go dry, and that's reflected by this magenta line. You can see 
Uh, this is the 50-year average, this blue line. This black line is what happened last year. And this is what happened so far this year. So you see this strong December here, and then it, it dried out and, and, and went flat on us. I already looked this morning. This has already ticked up to about right up in this area. So we've already had this curve come back up higher. But this is where we were um, as of like 10 days ago or so. So we had a good, strong start, went dry. We've had this recent storm. We've got predicted storms uh, coming up maybe at the, the end of this week and, 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 and another one out about a week from now. Same kind of picture, but what this does now is it says, well, if we're, if we're here right now, what if it stayed dry? Or if it was, you know, an average condition? Again, this is the long term. This is where we were, where we are, I, I should say, two forecasts. So, looking uh, out, we're looking at a pretty good What's remarkable here is we've had nearly a quarter of a million acres of runoff already come out of the mountains here. That compared to the, the speed of your average of about 100 So almost this is already covered. You're going to be on the dawn slide. You haven't been able to take the water and store it. We have maintained our speed of our elevation. We can't go greater than that. Way up, up until late 27. So we have been able to capture this. Um, this shows full natural flow. It's just about 200,000. This is the long term average. This is last year. To really see where this, where this gets that April, July, that's where we get the flow of our run. After about April 27, we're able to make that run and put it into the story on people. So, our company with their D20 updates, um, they use ground truth snow surveys to begin on February, March, April, and May. And then, based upon the, the ground truthing, they come up with a, a forecast where they take three different scenarios. Uh, uh, they take a, a, uh, a dry scenario, a wet scenario, and a um, average scenario. And they put out this forecast, and, and we typically look at what's happening on the average forecast. Here it was 116%, or 1.42 million acre feet. That compares roughly to an April through July runoff of 1.2 million. So again, it's a greater than average uh, water year development. They, they take what has happened And they distribute that for focus. So that there's this current condition of the reservoir, there's a forecast based on the snowpack, there's a forecast based on what that melt might be, and then they distribute it out across those months. And I'll get to the last slide here, but this one, don't worry about how busy it looks, but what I want to show the blue should have been able to fill the reservoir with whatever water is available from year to year, and that's what a reservoir is all about, right? It's, it's when you have a wetter than normal year, you're able to put that water in storage, draw it down in the dry years, and, and, and in between. The big white areas are the droughts. This is the period of record drought, the 76-77 period. This is the 87 to 92 drought. Uh, this was a small drought we had at the beginning of the, the 2000 decade. This is the uh, 06, 07, 08, 09 period, and you can see where we are today. So, um, one thing worth noting is is up between these red lines is where we're able to take water up into the reservoir. You can see a few times we've been able to fill that almost completely to the top. What's remarkable is this one right here. That was the. So this is the whole story where, um, as I have a flat curve called the flood curve, and from October 7th of each year, beginning of the year, 
all the way review period that we're going through now. Uh, through the end of this year, we will be developing study plans, uh, in, uh, going back and forth with, again, the different stakeholders, stakeholder meetings, and receiving stakeholder input. Um, over the next couple years, then, we uh, go through and execute the agreed to study plans to receive, be on a contact list that will receive all these notices. We're also going to be doing a, a regular newsletter so if you want to be kept informed without getting every single notice, you'll have the opportunity to uh, be included on that uh, list as, as well. And all the documents that are involved in the relicensing process will also be posted to this website. So that's an excellent resource as well. One uh, additional thought, and I think we mentioned it early on, is that Obviously, the district counts on hydro for electricity. You know, there's a misconception that we get primarily all our power from Don Pedro. Uh, we roughly get about eight to, to nine percent of uh, our power from Don Pedro. But the important aspect of it is that the more water that runs down the river, there's a possibility that that won't run through the generator and therefore won't generate electricity. So there's a huge, and, and we're, we are in the process now of conducting numerous studies present to the various entities and, and regulatory requirements on the effects of water bypassing the generators, a huge number in terms of what California would be missing from that standpoint. So I guess the message I would like to leave you with, and then we'll open it up for questions, is the district is engaged in all aspects. What we are promoting at this point in time are simple solutions, things that you can do now with relatively no low cost to money or to water. There seems to be a reluctance from regulators and those agencies to want to implement those types of things. The, fi the fundamental choice appears to be additional water. That's the, uh, that's the objective and that's the goal. So from that perspective, we're going to continue to fight. But we're looking for you if you feel inclined to do so. There's a list back there. Start calling some of these folks. Help us out in terms of where we're going and what we're doing. Because it's your water, it's your facility, and what we're trying to do is maintain it and keep it. So with that, I'd like to open it up. Walt's here, um, Joy's here, I'm here. We'll answer any questions you may like. Before we do that, though, I would like to introduce Tom Van Groningen. Tom has, has stepped in. He's also on, on the board of directors. So we have four of the five here this evening. Tom, welcome and thank you. I would like to know out of 100% of the hydro, how can we only get 90% if we're paid for it? Where does the rest of it go? Well, our load is roughly 